let's try this. Amen. Such a wonderful word, such a wonderful, that was just confirmation for me. I don't know about you guys, but I felt the spirit moving. I felt God just pouring all of it onto us. Amen. So I'm going to pray, and then we'll get right into the word, and then we'll start, okay? Make sure that's loud enough. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's pray. Thank you, God, for this day. Thank you, God, for this word. Oh, Father, I just thank you, God, for just depositing such revelation into us, oh, God. I thank you for the way that you move. I thank you for your presence. I thank you for your spirit, Father. And I just pray as I deliver this word, oh God, that it just be onto the people, your children, oh Father, for everybody to receive here in the church, as a body, as my family, and out there on the internet, oh God. I pray, oh Father, that you just continue to use us in such a mighty way, such a great way, oh Father. And I just pray for your heavenly deposits to continue, your, he your hidden treasures, oh Father, to be revealed. We thank you, Jesus. Give us the mind, the hearts to hear you, oh God. Let us be rid of all distractions. Take down, pull down the strongholds, oh Father. Cast them down, oh God, and be alert to receive your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Okay, so we're going to start in 2 Kings 20. Actually, let's just start from 20. What's the title? Jesus over religion. It was the death of the legacy, but God just was speaking to me, and he's going to do something good. Hallelujah. Amen. So he just gave me that, Jesus over religion. Okay, so I'll start. I'm going to start in verse 20, 2 Kings verse 20. I'm sorry, 2 Kings chapter 10, verse 20. Say amen when you're there. Amen. Amen. Jehu said, sanctify a festive assemble for Baal. So they proclaimed it. So they proclaimed it. Jehu sent word through all Israel. Israel and the worshipers of Baal came. Not a man remained who did not come. They came into the house of Baal, and the house of Baal was full from one end to another. He said to one in charge of the wardrobe, bring out garments for all the worshipers of Baal. So he brought them garments. Then Jehu and Jehona, Jehonadab, the son of Rechab, went into the house of Baal, and said to the worshipers of Baal, Search and see that there are no worshipers of the Lord here with you, and only worshipers of Baal. Then they went to offer sacrifices and burnt offerings. But Jehu put 80 men outside and said, If any of these men whom I have brought unto your hands escapes, the one who lets him go will die in his place. We're going to drop down to 28 and just finish it up. It says, so Jehu exterminated Baal from Israel, but from the sins of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, who caused Israel to sin, Jehu did not turn aside, that is, the golden calves that were in Bethel and Dan. And the Lord said to Jehu, because you have done well with my doing what is right in my sight and have done to the house of Ahab all that was in my heart, four generations of your son, will sit on the throne of Israel. But Jehu was not careful to walk in the law of the Lord of God of Israel with all his heart. He did not turn aside from the sins of Jeroboam, who caused Israel to sin. Amen. Amen. I thought this was so powerful because we've been talking about Jezebel. We've been talking about the spirit of Jezebel and Ahab. And we've been, you know, talking about what Jezebel represents. She represents the woman who doesn't want to repent. And we saw that how the end of her death was. She went all the way into the very last minute yes. when she could have repented, yes. but instead made her face with, with black paint and she was thrown down and was eaten with the dogs and trampled. And we saw that when she didn't repent, that gave way into now the death of who she was at that time. Yes. But the spirit of her continues to live. Yes. So Ahab... We now are going to address Ahab because Ahab, without Jezebel, only operates through Ahab, right? She was she would not have even had that power, if of that yes, if Ahab didn't acknowledge or didn't um, allow her to come in. Yes. Amen. 
he knew that she worshiped false gods. He knew that she was literally idolizing all these other things. He even made, we talked about the last thing, she made, he made um, an idol for her to worship Baal in his kingdom. Yeah, and so that's why God was so angry and why he, even the why their deaths were so extreme is because of that unrepentant heart. Amen. So when we looked at Jehu, when we talked about, I think I did a little bit of an intro last time that I was talking about, that I thought the title of this was supposed to be the, like, the death of a legacy. But Jesus reminded me, this is no, this is Jesus over religion. Because where people get carnal minded, what we just talked about earlier, they start to try to be smarter than God, right? They try to justify, they try to get into the point of, well, I'm doing this because I was hurt or because I was rejected or because of, you know, they give way into that spirit. It's an open door where Satan can come in completely and take over households, generations, and, and more to come. But God wanted to put a, a stop to that. So Jehu, he raised up Jehu, actually, and he sent Jehu to Ahab's whole kingdom and told him, don't leave anybody alive. Kill them all. And so Jehu went and did that. So he was so angry and so filled with, I want to be righteous and everything. We read in this passage, he did a whole thing where he called all the worshipers of Baal to this kingdom, to, the, to fellowship, yes. but then tricked them and then actually killed them because he sent the 80 men to stand on the outside and said, nobody comes out of here. All of them are going to die. Yeah, no one escapes. And if they do escape, that's your life in, in replacement of theirs. So Jehu, Jehu completely, you know, was following the word of God. But then at the end, where it says in 28, in verse 28, it explains that Jehu actually let some sin in, right? He didn't completely destroy. He did just a little bit enough to where he said, I got the majority. But God is just a God we talked about earlier. He wants everything. He's coming back for a spotless bride. He wants everything completely, completely gone. I thought about of the revelation of how he's going to use fire at the end. Why would he use fire? Because he wants to scorch every single, he doesn't, there's not even a little thing of, of sin left. He's going to completely wipe it out. Amen. Amen. So when Jehu left, it said the golden cows that were aside. It doesn't explain why he did it, just... It also, it, to me, it bring the revelation of he still had a little bit of the world in his heart. Yeah. He still was carnal yes. to put that aside because if he was very righteous, he would have killed it all. Yeah. He wouldn't leave any trace because God wants the very best of us. He wants the utmost sacrifice that we can give, yes. right? And he, he honors because there's sometimes times we try to, again, logically think, I, I can't do this and because of, how pastor was saying, if my house is going to be destroyed, if my bank account, if my job is in jeopardy, then I'm just going to do just enough to kind of get, get in line with God. But God sees every little thing Amen. and he wants everything completely Amen. wiped out. And when we don't obey him, there's consequences because it, it later goes on to talk about, he gave Jehu four generations, right? So people feel like they still are buying time. It gave me the revelation of people feel like because God hasn't acted right now, because I'm still seeing like, OK, I'm, I'm getting married, I'm having kids. I'm, there's still an end to that because the, the, the truth is God really wants our heart completely because he wants to be able to carry the legacy. But when there's a little bit of sin, there's a little bit of an open door, there's a little bit of people are coming to try to feel like they have the authority. God doesn't want that at all. And we have to understand God's heart. Amen. So we're going to go to 2 Corinthians. I want to go a little bit quick because I have so much to say, but Jesus is just ruling, so I'm just going to let him go. Okay, so I'm going to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 11. Amen. Amen. And I'm going to read until 21. Okay, so it says, The Ministry of Reco Reconciliation. Therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we persuade men but are revealed to God, and I trust 
we are also revealed in your consequences, for we are not condemning ourselves again to you. Instead, we give you occasion to boast on, your, on our behalf, that you may have something to answer those who boast in appearance and do not in heart. If we are beside ourselves, it is for God. If we are in our right man, it is for you. For the love of Christ constrains us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then all have died. And he died for all, for those who live should not from now on live for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. So from now on, we do not regard anyone according to the flesh. Yes, though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet we do not regard him as such from now on. Therefore, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Look, all things have become new. Amen. All this is from God, who has reconciled us to himself. Therefore, Jesus Christ has, and has given us the ministry of reconciling. Gosh, that's a <laughs> reconciliation that is that is that God was in Christ reconciling the word, the world to himself, not counting their sins against them and has entrusted to us the message of reconcilia reconciliation. I want to put like a Z in it. <laughs> reconciliation that so we are ambassadors for Christ as though God were pleaded through us. We implore you in Christ's stead. Be reconciled to God. God made him who knew no sin for us, that we might become the righteous of God in him. Amen. 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 And God led me to that because there's so much that, how Pastor was saying, that's happening, the warfare that is happening right now. And we're trying to make logical sense of why this is happening or how do I defeat this? And you're feeling like, God, what, like now, like the, the pressure that is coming, what Pastor Daryl said, the tribulation, the pressure that comes yes, yes. in this time is a warfare that we have to stand in spirit because we cannot reason how it's going to be in, in our flesh. Amen. And if we completely give ourselves to God, it said in the verse when I was looking at it, he said that reconciled so many times, right? The word that I had trouble speaking he said it five times in this verse, and I was looking at the Hebrew meaning of what reconciled means, and it means to come to, to, to peace with God, and re is again, right? So when we talked about even the beginning, Adam used to walk in the cool of the day with the Lord, so the, but when there was sin that separated us from him, we had, he sent his son Jesus to now reconcile the relationship back to our Father. So we have to have the understanding that God wants us to completely be in partnership and spirit with him. But to able to do that, he said, you can't reconcile with God if you don't repent. The first Amen. thing is repentance. Amen. Repentance brings you to reconcile. Yes, and now yes, you can have the conversations, you can have the open heart. Earlier when we're speaking, when we're singing the song, he's made in his presence, or made in his presence, and we sang it twice, God, I just broke because that, the words of what Pastor was saying, the words that were in that song, when it talked about, he knows that your past is broken. He knows that, right? He knows that we're sinned. We know, he knows that we, we struggle to try to, to make sense of things, to come to him, but he's made a new day every single time. He's made new mercy, so the mercy is falling. Mercy has fallen. But we just have to be there to receive it. Amen. That's why he came to the cross. He saw the joy set before him and he came to the cross because he knew that I have to do this because they have to have a way to come back to the Father. Hallelujah. Amen. And I speak about this too because what's been on my heart so heavy, every time I even think about it a little, my tears just come because we're in a generation who don't love God, who don't want God at all a God-hating world, and completely what my heart really grieves for is a generation, in my generation, millennials, and Generation Z, they're completely in their own mindset of doing things, right? The God, the God of this world is blind, amen. And they completely feel that they're in the right, 
They feel that they, they lead by the spirit, they lead by the God of this world, which is Satan, and they, they completely try to justify their hurts and their wrongs, and their vengeance. They want to take their battles in their own hands. And I've seen there's so, been so much warfare, especially in my household, that I've seen in generations that there's that, that warfare that is trying to bring them down. Satan wants to bring these souls down with yes, him. Yes, yes, yes. But we have to be able to step up and say, when I first really even gave my, my first love to Christ, I used to travel back and forth when I was 13 every summer to Kenya. I wanted to know my culture and my, my, you know, who my grandparents were. I grew up not knowing them. And every single year, I saw that they were not really understanding my, who I was, like how I was talking. So there's that rejection that was happening. And I started to be like, God, I can't fight for that anymore. Like I can't fight for the culture and who my people feel that their traditions is more higher than you. Amen. So my first time that I really came to God was 2014. And my, my heart in that time, before when I was baptized, because I was in school, I was in college in Arkansas. That's where I was in Conway, in the, in the boondocks, <laughs> in God the woods. God. Amen. <laughs> God had to take me out there. But I found God in that. And we went to a river, and I was baptized. And the first thing I said was God, let me intercede for my generation. And I said that with such an ignorance too, because it was just like what came from my soul. Like, God, I knew that you raised me in this moment to be able to speak for the generations to come. And I want to be that symbol for you. And God, I, oh, every time that there's warfare and there's, there's strife and everything, I have to remember that. God, God actually reminds me of that specific phrase that I use. God used me to intercede for this generation. But when I, now the warfare that is happening, the people that really hate God and see God in you, said God, they hated God first. They hated Jesus first. So they will spit in your face. They will cuss to you. They will, you know, I've, I've dealt with that in the past couple months more than ever. Before it was like people at least were a little cordial and kind of was like, you believe in Jesus, whatever, like, nah, it's fine. Like, and I'd be like, hey, if you don't want it, it's fine, I move on. But at this point, the battle is on. And the hate that they have, the demonic faces that I've really come face to face with, has put me in a place of isolation, truly. But God has shown me, too, that in this time, I'm going to raise you up. I'm going to completely defeat everything. I've already defeated it. So stand strong in your faith. Stand strong in the spirit. Because the hidden treasures that are in him, he wants it to be revealed. But if we don't have Pastor said in Psalm 91, he also gave me this morning, if I do not completely be under his wing, you will miss it. The people that who have been saved and who have gone to church and going through their things, that's why I said Jesus gave me the revelation I was sitting. It is about Jesus over the religion, because people who feel like they've been in church and doing things, that's where actually the most hate has come from. They feel like, oh, you think you know better than me? Oh, you think you're doing this and that, and you feel like you're more righteous? But the battle is not even that. But they see your light, they want it, they don't know how to get it. They, they've done the, the same way they've done, because I've also been, was raised in church, brought up and literally down the street, gone to church every single Sunday, my mother and my father, they worship the Lord, but it became a religious act, right? So when actually when you're in that religious act and you don't see the promises of God come to pass, you start to, that's what made my backslide and questioning, God, like, what is happening? It's like, you don't know me. You feel that you know me, but you don't really know me. So God will use things within, like even Jehu's spirit and his story, he used Jehu because he needed things to get done. Right, the kingdom of, of God will always prevail, but at the end, it was God really pleased with him. Would God really be pleased with us? And I wanted that so desperately. I said, God, whatever I'm doing, I want to actually do the works of the kingdom. That's what brought me back into. I, I, you can tell what is fake because it doesn't stand. Amen. You can see right through it. So I said, God, I, I want that desperately, genuinely. God, break me down every, and that's what he's been doing for the past three years now. He's been breaking it down. Breaking, there's more to break down, but he's been breaking it down. 
yeah. to that point that I'm like, God, I don't want the religion. I want you. I want to be with you. I want to reconcile to where we're walking in the cool of day again, right? I want the relationship. And the most that I want it, I want it for others as well. Because when we spend our time with him, we see how precious it is. Ooh, God is moving. We see how precious it is, right? And we want it for, we want it for the others. We want them to receive that. But they have to be able to wake up. They have to be able to receive it. Amen. And God will do it, but their hearts cannot be hardened. So I speak that. I just want to pray right now. We can end in that because God, Father Jesus, we just pray over what you are doing right now, oh God. We pray that you soften the hearts of the people who have turned away from you, God. We pray for those prodigal sons out there, Jesus, who know who you are but don't have the relationship with you, Jesus. We pray, oh Father, for that to transcend, oh God, completely in their hearts to want to know you again, to know that this world has nothing to offer them, to know that it is just false facades, it is just completely fake things that will not stand, Jesus. Speak to their hearts of stone, Jesus. Speak to them to stand up, O oh Father, for righteousness. Speak to the love in them that they desperately need, O oh God. We pray for the sons right now, Jesus, O oh God, who are stuck in that culture and that tradition, yes. who feel that they're not worthy, O oh God. I just pray that they come to find their identity in you. I pray that they come to find the truth in who you are, Jesus. To know, to see clearly, O oh God, that they are so loved, that they are so loved, O oh Father. I pray that they come back to know you, to reconcile with you, to walk with you, Jesus. Father God, we thank you for your mercy has fallen. Even though we have broken past, even though that we have completely filthy sins, I pray that everything, O oh Father, is wiped clean. I pray that we return and reconcile, come back to the Lord, be under your wing, and I pray that you cover us, O oh Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. So I want to end. <laughs> I want to end with um, 2 Corinthians 7, 1. Ooh, Holy Spirit, we thank you, Jesus. Okay, so 2 Corinthians 7, 1, it says, since we, all, since we have these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Amen. I just pray that that's, that's what God does for this generation for these men and women who are out there desperately seeking the Father, who are desperately wanting that connection. I just pray that they have that open door that whoever they speak to, wherever they see it, from their television, from people who they're meeting, that they have that encounter, they have the visitation that will change their life completely. Yes, amen. 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 Jesus' name I pray. Thank you, guys. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah.